and gentlemen, an emergency bulletin has just been handed me. Dateline, North Pole. With only a few days to go before Christmas, Rudolph, the well-known celebrity reindeer, he of the red nose, has been stricken with a severe case of the flu. That famous nose, insured by Floyd's of London for $10 million, is reported to be stuffed as well as running, which is more than Rudolph will be doing. Those proud antlers are definitely drooping tonight. Yes, things are glum in North Polesville. If Rudolph does not make a miraculous recovery, Santa Claus has been quoted as saying that his Christmas Eve visits may have to be canceled due to Rudolph's illness. Yes, impossible as it may seem, we may have Christmas Eve without Santa this year, folks. We'll keep you posted on the latest developments. Christmas Eve canceled? They can't do that to me. I'm a citizen. I pay my taxes. I demand my Christmas Eve visit from Santa. I wait all year for this. Hey, what about all the little kids? This is a national emergency. Call out the National Guard. The toys must get through. Hey, Sam, what good is hollering? If you want a job done, you clever rabbit, do it yourself. I think I will. I'm gonna take me a trip up to the North Pole and see what's going on. Gotta hit your ride so I can get up to the North Pole fast. Hey! Somebody! Anybody! Stop! Hey, uh, Bugs! Uh, get in! Where can I drop you? This is an emergency, Porky. Drop me at the North Pole. If, if, uh, pardon me, Bugs, uh, but, uh, but did I hear you say in, 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 in North Pole? That's what you heard me say, and we got a step on it. If we're gonna save Christmas Eve from being a disaster. It, 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 what do you mean, Bugs? Just drive, and I'll tell you all about it. Hey, Porky, isn't that Speedy Gonzalez? <coughs> Beep. What's up, Doc? Oh, if it isn't Bossy Bonnie and Porky the Pig, you fellas didn't see a big black pussycat, did you? I'm hiding from him. And, and, and no, we didn't, Speedy. Hey, Speedy, we could use your help. We're hurrying up to the North Pole. You want to come? Are there any pussycats at the North Pole? Nah, just reindeer and snow. And there's, there's, there's Santa Claus and toys. Okay, I come. I need a place to cool off. But why the North Pole? Okay, fellas, here's the problem. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, got the flu. And if he ain't gonna guide Santa's sleigh on Christmas Eve, Santa ain't gonna ride around without him. After all, he'd get lost, mixed up, might even deliver the wrong toys to the wrong house. We gotta hurry up and see what's going on. Think of all the little kids waiting for their toys, waiting to see Rudolph and Santa. Why, their little hearts would be broken. Yes, stop it, Bugs. I'm gonna uh, cry and uh, crack up the car. Oh, this problem called for using the old bean. Hippa, 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 hippa. A late report on the illness of Rudolph, the very red-nosed reindeer, indicates that his condition is unchanged. Mrs. Claus is administering chicken soup, while Santa is reported to be sulking around the house, mumbling, I won't go, I won't go without Rudolph. There is only one bright spot on the horizon. A trio of concerned citizens is nearing the North Pole after a heroic journey by car, boat, ski, and finally dog sled. Can this valiant rabbit and his friends find a solution to what looks to be a grim Christmas for all of us? Well, we made it. And there is a pussycat inside. You can eat me because I'm too tired to run, I think. Ho, ho, ho. I wonder who that can be. Come in, whoever you are. Meep. What's up, Doc? How's Rudolph? And uh, what about Christmas Eve? And all the toys? Whoa there, so many questions. Listen, Doc, we're the Consigned Citizens Committee of the Wild, acting on behalf of Consigned Christmas lovers everywhere. You can't let us down on Christmas Eve. Christmas isn't Christmas without Santa. That is something everybody knows. Christmas isn't Christmas without Santa. And that fellow with the animals and red nose <laughs> isn't without Santa. Children round the world all sit and wait. Presents are in presents without Santa. So Santa Claus, we beg you, please don't hesitate. Please, please. 
please, won't you reconsider, please, please, we're counting on you to deliver the goods, the toys, to all the girls and boys, oh, Christmas isn't Christmas without Santa, his red suit and his reindeer and his sleigh, Christmas isn't Christmas without Santa, and gosh, we wouldn't want it any other way, you bet your whiskers, we wouldn't want it any other way, your reindeer's antlers, we wouldn't want it any other way. Well, it doesn't look good, fellas. Rudolph's still pretty sick. Why, his red nose is positively purple. Oh, <laughs> and sneezes? Why, even if the poor deer could drag himself out of bed to lead my reindeer on Christmas Eve, one sneeze and all the suburban Minneapolis would have the flu. Oh, he'd start a regular epidemic. And we, we can't have that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. One thing people don't want Santa to bring them is a cold. So that's the situation. And without Rudolph to guard my sleigh, why, I'm positively grounded. Why, well, he's my automatic pilot. Gets me through the clouds, the snow, the fog, the smog. Looks like I'm not going anywhere with all these beautiful presents. Just a minute, Doc. Just a minute. We didn't come all the way up to the North Pole to let all the kids in the world down, did we, fellas? You're right, Bugs. See, see, Bugs, but what can we do? You know, rabbits have very sensitive noses. We're always sniffing our way around. So, guess who's gonna lead Santa's reindeer on Christmas Eve? Folks, you are now looking at Bugs, the red-nosed bunny. You know the old family motto, the toys must get through. Good evening, friends, and a Merry Christmas Eve it's going to be. Reports from our northern states are that Santa and his reindeer are riding tonight. And up in front, leading the way, a bright red nose and two proud antlers. Earlier bulletins reported seeing two long ears resembling rabbit ears, but these have been discounted as having been the result of some <clears throat> early celebrations. After all, whoever heard of a red-nosed rabbit leading Santa's sleigh? And now we bring you a special message recorded via satellite direct from the flying sleigh. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, one and all! Hey, Doc, how many more stops do we have? Oh, these antlers are getting heavy. So, Christmas is your Christmas without Santa. His red suit and his reindeer and his sleigh. Christmas isn't Christmas without Santa. And gosh, we wouldn't want it any other way. You bet your whiskers, we wouldn't want it any other way. Your reindeer's antlers, we wouldn't want it any other way. Listeners, try, if you will, not to make any noise, for we are ready to begin our sad tale. Oh, woe is me. As we look in at the penthouse apartment of one of the city's wealthiest men, the well-known man about town, Elmer J. Fudd, amid a setting of unbelievable comfort and splendor, we see an obviously unhappy figure. He speaks. Oh, woe. One of the city's wealthiest men in my penthouse of unbelievable comfort and splendor, and I am not well. I would gladly give it all up if I could be cured of my terrible problem. As good fortune would have it, a kind and gentle soul practicing his skydiving happened to be floating down past the penthouse window when he heard what he knew was a cry he couldn't refuse. Yep. What's up, Doc? Oh, woe is me. More problems. Now I'm seeing rabbits. Of course you are, Doc. It's me, here in the flesh. Now what seems to be the matter? Tell me all about it, huh? Hey, you look terrible, Doc. Oh, I feel terrible. 
How can you feel terrible in a fancy place like this? I mean, the carpet's so thick, if I dropped my carrot, I'd never find it. <laughs> what good are carpets and treasures to a troubled man? Okay, okay, spit it out. Let's get it out in the open. What's the trouble? You sure you won't laugh at me? Laugh? You're looking at a serious rabbit, Doc. Well, okay. You've heard of guys who think they're Napoleon or King Henry VIII? Well, I think I'm Santa Claus. Santa Claus, huh? Well, uh, maybe you are. You know, I never saw Santa Claus in person, and who knows? Maybe you really are. See? You're making fun of me. Me make fun of you, Doc? Never. I just think we should look at the bright side. There is no bright side. I'm crazy. That's what I am. Crazy. If anyone finds out, they'll put me away somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'd give up this penthouse and all the treasures in it if only I was cured of this terrible problem. Say, Doc, this is getting more interesting every minute. You give this fancy place to the person who can cure you? Well, I think your problems are about over, Doc. I know a very famous head doctor who can cure anyone. Well, he convinced George Washington that he was a pitcher for the Yankees. How else do you think George could have thrown that dollar across to Delaware? I really never thought of that. To tell you the truth, he must be a very busy man. Do you think you'll have time for a humble millionaire like me? You just leave everything to me, Doc. He happens to be a very good friend of mine. You just come to the address on this card tomorrow morning, and you'll be taken care of. Yes, sir, you will be taken care of. Come with us as we follow our good Samaritan rabbit as he leaves a grateful millionaire waiting and hoping for tomorrow. My, but our rabbit seems to be in a hurry. What is he up to? Daffy! Daffy! Oh, where is that crazy duck? He's always around when I don't need him. Yoo-hoo, Daffy! Simmer down, you noisy, screaming thing. A duck could get a severe headache from such a racket. This duck is gonna get a headache in a minute because I'm gonna flatten you if you don't listen to me. Proceed. You've got my strict attention. You see, it's this way. I met this fella who thinks he's Santa Claus. How sweet. I mean, for real. He's got a problem. What do I care about a silly guy with a silly problem? You care because the silly guy with a silly problem is silly with money, and he's silly enough to give it to the people who can cure him of the silly thought that he's Santa Claus. Oh, the sweet man. Lead me to him. Just a minute there, Doc. You are looking at the famous head doctor, Dr. B.B. Rabbitoff, who needs a nurse who looks just like you. A nurse? A nurse? I'd make a terrible nurse. I'm sloppy, careless, and clumsy. I'd make a terrible nurse, but I'd make a great doctor. No chance, Mac. I'm the doctor and you're the nurse. Got it? And no mistakes. Now let's get busy and fix up the place so that when Santa drops in tomorrow morning, we'll be all ready for him. Gotta hang up the old shingle. Hey, not bad, not bad if I say so myself. B.B. Rabbitoff, M.D. Uh, M.D., mine doctor. I think that's pretty clever myself. Now a couple of diplomas. Uh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> now we'd better have a rehearsal for tomorrow. Uh, oh, uh, nice Daffy. Nice Daffy. Would you please come in here? What are you, crazy rabbit carrying on like this? I've got a good mind to punch you in the nose. Is that what you're gonna do when a guy comes here tomorrow morning? What kind of a duck brain are you? I tell you, you've gotta be my nice. Every doctor's gotta have a nice. And that reminds me, every mind doctor's gotta have a couch. Now, uh, where can I get a couch on such quick notice? Boy, are you lucky to have a nurse like me. I'm so smart. Would you like to see my special inflatable couch? You gotta help me now. I got plenty of hot air, but not enough to blow up a whole couch. Come on, hot lips. Let's blow up the couch together. <laughs> Hey, 
Daffy. I'm, I'm getting winded. Whoever said being a doctor was easy? C can we stop now? Do you want to have a sagging sofa? I, I know I was crazy to, to get mixed up with this silly duck. But when you gotta blow, you gotta blow. <laughs> stop! Enough! Look at that beautiful couch. Perfect. We're all set for tomorrow. Now don't forget, just call me Doc. Gracious, it's morning already. I better hurry and get dressed. Today I got a travel to the famous doctor the Wabbit told me about. I certainly hope he can cure me of my problem. Ho ho ho! This feeling that I'm Santa Claus has just gotta stop. This must be the place. The shingle says B.B. Wabbitoff, M.D. Mind Doctor. Answer the door, Daffy. Remember, you're supposed to be the nice. Oh, curses on nurses. <laughs> Daffy, remember the money, the money. Coming, coming. Won't you come in, sir? The doctor will see you in a moment. Thanks a lot, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Oh, you can just call me uh, Daffy, sweetums. Hey, you're pretty cute. Would you like to take a ride in my sleigh? Your sleigh? Oh, yes, and I got eight reindeer pulling it. Would you like to know what I call them? Spare me, chum. I can just imagine. Oh, the doctor will see you now. Step right this way, sucker. I mean, sir. Hey, what's up, Doc? <laughs> That's just a little joke, Doc. Some rabbit I know says it all the time. Uh, you mean like, uh, meh. What's up, Doc? Say, that's terrific. You sound just like him. Now, isn't that strange? Now, if we're gonna help you, uh, you better tell me all about your problem. Well, it's this way, Doc. I think I'm Santa Claus. That's serious, isn't it? Certainly is. That's known in medical cycles as Santa Claustrophobia. Gracious, do you think you can cure me? I'm a very rich man. I'll give a large reward just to be cured. You've come to the right place. We uh, specialize in rewards. We may not be able to cure you, but we'll certainly help you to live with it. Why don't you give in to your problem? Express yourself. You might even enjoy it. Look at it this way, pal. If you get yourself a bright red suit and a nice set of whiskers, and use some of your money to buy presents for some kids who won't be getting any this year, you could become the most popular guy in town. I bet you'd, uh, you'd get invited to everybody's party. Yeah, yeah, sure. That way, your Santa claustrophobia will be making a lot of people happy, including you. Do you really think it will work? I bet my professional reputation on it. Oh, that's terrific. I wonder why I never thought of it. I'm going home right now and dig out the old wedge suit. And how can I thank you, Doc? You and your lovely nurse have changed my miserable life into a happy one. My penthouse apartment is yours. Plus my car, my boat, my plane, my dog. Did you hear that, Bugs? We're rich! <laughs> rich! <laughs> See? I knew it. That guy's a regular Sandy Claus. <laughs> Hey, it's getting chilly around here. I guess winter is about to descend on these humble premises. Which is just another way of saying that it's time for yours truly to take a vacation to some nice, warm place. I deserve a holiday. I owe it to myself. Besides, Granny says she's driving down south, so I may as well go along for the ride. <laughs> Beats walking, I always say. Meep. What's up, Granny? All packed and ready to go? I sure am, Bugs. Looks like you decided to come with old Granny. Yeah, nothing like a change of scene. And who needs all this cold weather? Yeah. That's what I say, double yeah. We'll find a nice warm place for the winter. My old bones can do without all this snow. Let's go, Bugs. 
You sure this old heap is gonna make it, Granny? Oh, heap my eye. Don't you start insulting this fine old motor car. It'll get us wherever we want to go. So just mind your manners and uh, get out the maps. Oh, the maps. Yeah. But where to, Granny? I'd say we just keep driving till we see a town that strikes our fancy. Say, Granny, we're coming to a sign. It's so dusty around here I can hardly read it. Looks like it says, Welcome to the town of Holly. Population 112. Boy, it looks like nothing ever happens around here. Talk about peace and quiet. I bet they arrest the rooster for disturbing the peace when he crows. I wonder where everybody is. Stay where you are and put your hands up. You heard me, critters. Reach for the sky. Okay, okay, but do you have to point that thing at me? Gets me kind of nervous. No wisecracks, varmints. Put them up and keep them up. I heard you talking about arrest and disturbing the peace. If you two think you're gonna use the town of Holly as a hideout, you got another thing coming. You can't fool me. You two are Franny and Slugs, the famous bank robbers, or my name ain't Yosemite Sam. The sheriff of the town of Holly, I hereby put you both under arrest. Now you're coming to jail. Jail? You gotta be kidding. I'm a rabbit, an innocent rabbit. Bugs Bunny's the name. You don't put innocent rabbits in jail now, do you? And this here is Granny, a kindly little old lady. You don't put kindly little old ladies in jail now, do you? Just hold it right there, rabbit. They didn't make old Yosemite Sam sheriff of this town for nothing. You can't fool me. You're Franny and slugs in disguise. That's Bugs. Bugs. How many times do I have to tell you? It's Granny and Bugs, and this ain't no disguise buster. These are long rabbit ears, see? Pull. Ouch! Don't try to pull my ears, you big galoot, or I'll get you with my hat pin. Threaten an assault with a deadly weapon and insulting an officer of the legal law. There's two more charges I can add to bank robbing, disturbing the peace, leaving the scene of the crime. Listen, Mac, if this is the way you treat tourists, it's no wonder nobody ever comes to this place. We're not bank robbers, we're taking a vacation, looking for a nice warm place to spend the winter. I'm not buying that story, Vermin. Nobody wants to spend a holiday in Holly. People who live here have been trying to leave it just as fast as they can. But if it's a nice rest you're after, you're gonna get it, in jail. So get, partner, and you too, little lady. How long do you think they'll keep us here, Bugs? I don't know, Granny, but this is some holiday. Come to the land of sparkling sunshine. Sunshine? Who needs it? I wish I was home freezing and shivering. Do you know what day it is, Granny? It's almost Christmas. We're not even gonna see one little itty-bitty snowflake down here. A town with a name of Holly. You'd think they at least deck the halls or something. No Christmas spirit. Huh. Here comes Yosemite Sam checking up on us again. I think I'll serenade him. Try to get him in the Christmas spirit. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. -la 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 -la. Hey, Sheriff, we prisoners demand our rights. A little holly on the walls, a Christmas tree, some twinkling lights, and what about some snow? After all, what's Christmas without snow? Cut it out, varmint. This here ain't no country club. You two should have thought of all those things before you robbed those banks and shot all those innocent folks. Why, you're the baddest critters I ever did see. When I get out of here, I'm gonna bop that man with my rolling pin. He could turn a person into a criminal. We're innocent, you clod. Innocent. That's what they all say. But I can tell those shifty eyes, that cruel mouth. Criminals, both of you. Hey, what's that? Sounds like trouble. Looks like the real Franny and Slugs are trying to rob the bank. But then, who are you? Listen, Doc, we told you before, we just came to Holly for a vacation. 
Now will you let us out? We can help you catch those criminals. Granny and her car can really get up some speed. I sure could use some help. This being a one-horse town and all, the horse, he up and died on me last week. Well, let's get going. We'll be a regular posse. Which way, Sheriff? They went that away. I can tell them critters mean business. My ten-gallon hat's got a leak in it. Time for my old lasso trip. Gotcha, you varmints. At last, the real Franny and Slugs. Say, Doc, that was a pretty neat trick. I'm glad you caught the bank robbers, because Granny and I were sort of getting homesick sitting around in jail. Now, don't get me wrong, Doc. Uh, we don't hold nothing against you. But being away from home at Christmas time just ain't what it's cracked up to be. It just don't feel like Christmas here in Holly. I mean, uh, don't you people miss the snow? Snow? What in the world would we want with snow? It would cover up all this beautiful cactus. No, we do just fine without all that sloppy white stuff. Sloppy white stuff? How can you say that? Why, at Christmas time at home, the snow makes the world look like a make-believe place. Tell me, have you ever seen snow? Truth is, Rabbit, I ain't. Been born and raised here in Holly. Doc, you don't know what you're missing. It's white and it's fluffy and it's falling everywhere. It's sailing and it's floating and it's trailing in the air. It's sitting on my eyebrows and it's tickling my nose And I'm loving every minute, cause I love snow It's cold and it sparkles and it makes the world bright It touches all the treetops with a special kind of light It decorates the city in the nicest way I know And I'm loving every minute, cause I love snow I love snow I love snow Love, da, da, I love it so. There are people who will sing of all the flowers in the spring, but just give me the choice about what I will raise my voice about. I love snow. I love snow. Love, da, da, I love it so. It's white and it's fluffy and it's falling everywhere. It's sailing and it's floating and it's trailing in the air. It's sitting on my eyebrows and it's tickling my nose. And I'm loving every minute cause I love snow. I love snow. Guess you folks will be heading home now. You said it. Got to rest so we can be back for Christmas. Goodbye, Holly Days. You said it, Bugs. So long, Yosemite Sam. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh boy, putting up these Christmas decorations sure puts me in a holiday mood. Even this old dump is starting to look good to me. <laughs> hey, what's up, Doc? Junior, how do you like the job your Uncle Bugs is doing on these decorations? Pretty terrific, huh? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Uncle Bugs, but I don't go in for all of this Christmas stuff. That's just for kids. For kids? Hey, you better cut out that kind of talk, Junior. What do you think Santa Claus would say if he heard you talking about Christmas that way? Really, Uncle Bugs, I'm surprised at you. Nobody believes in Santa Claus anymore. You grown-ups keep trying to fool us kids, but it won't work. Kids are too smart these days. Very interesting, very interesting. If you don't believe in Santa Claus, Big Shot, how come all you kids make a list up for him every year? I told you it's smart, Uncle Bugs. We figure you grown-ups need a little advice on what presents to get us, so we just leave a few hints around. 
This year, I've been hinting to Santa about a bicycle. <laughs> I hope he gets a hint. For your sake, Junior, I sure hope he does. Because your old Uncle Bugs is flat busted in the green stuff department. But since you don't believe in Santa Claus anyway, don't count too much on that bicycle. This younger generation is sure getting me down. Imagine the noise with that little squirt. He doesn't believe in Santa Claus. Why, what's Christmas without waiting for Santa and hoping he won't forget your house? And maybe if I go downtown to do some Christmas shopping, it'll cheer me up. Boy, it sure is busy downtown just before Christmas. All the hustle and bustle. <laughs> and look who's here. Hey, Sylvester, old buddy. Doing some Christmas shopping? I <laughs> certainly am, Bugs. Gee, Tweety, I didn't see you standing there next to Sylvester. To tell you the truth, I'm used to seeing you guys chasing each other, not shopping together. But it's Christmas, Bugs. At Christmas time, Sylvester changes from a bad old putty cat to a doodle putty cat. Yeah, I'm shopping for a present for Tweety. A nice bell. When Tweety wears it, I'll be able to follow the sound and, uh... And I'm gonna get Sylvester a nice, heavy pair of boots. Maybe that will slow him down. That's friendship if I ever heard it. I bet you two can't wait to see what Santa's gonna bring you. Oh, suffering sucker cash. You can say that again. I got my stocking hung up by the chimney. I hope Santa doesn't mind. I borrowed Sylvester's stocking, cause mine is too small to hold very much. Oh, I can't wait to see what Santa brings. Say, it's getting late. We better go, Sylvester. So long, Bugs, and Merry Christmas. Hope Santa brings you lots of carrots. <laughs> oh, boy, I wish that nephew of mine was here. Imagine that line he handed me about being too old to believe in Santa Claus. Hey, look who's doing a little shopping. If it ain't old Foghorn Leghorn. I wonder if he believes in Santa Claus. I'm gonna play a little joke on him in order to find out. Me, What's up, Doc? I, I beg your pardon, son. Would you kindly speak into this carrot, Doc? Uh, this is station WBBB, conducting some interviews with a man on the street. Uh, would you give us your name, Doc? Leghorn's name. Foghorn Leghorn, that is. Uh, now get that straight, son. I'm a mighty big man around these here parts, so uh, just make sure you get the name straight, huh? Yeah, Doc, we got it. Just remember to talk into this carrot. I will, son, I will. Uh, but uh, just don't crowd me. You know what they say, son. One's companies and two's a crowd here. <laughs> That's a joke, son. I know, Doc. The question of the day, Doc, is... Do you believe in Santa Claus? Do I, I say you ask, do I believe in Santa Claus? Why, son, do I believe in motherhood, in the flag, in apple pie, in Babe Ruth? I mean, son, you, you can't be serious in asking a red-blooded American that question. Listen, Doc, the whole country is out there waiting for an answer. So cut out the dramatics and let's hear it. Son, you have troubled my Christmas-loving heart. Not only do I believe in that great American Santa Claus, but right here in my pocket, I have a letter written by myself to that great man. I'll put an airmail stamp on it because I was a little late in writing this year. You don't say, Doc. I noticed that you called Santa Claus a great American. I always thought of him as being international, you know, belonging to everybody. Listen here, son. He lives at the North Pole, doesn't he? Yeah. And the North Pole is in Alaska, isn't it? Yeah. And Alaska is one of these here United States, isn't it? Yeah. Well, dag nabbit, son, that makes him an American, don't it? Then there are other countries, I say them other countries can borrow him if he's got some time left over. But you better believe he's starting right here in the good old USA. And I, for one, believe in America first. And don't you... Thanks, Doc, for giving us your answer. WBBB wants to take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Gee, even a loudmouth like Leghorn believes in Santa Claus, and I got a nephew who thinks he's too grown up to believe. Huh. I gotta teach him a lesson. Okay, I'm all set. Here it is Christmas Eve, and guess who's gonna get all dressed up in a Santa suit? 
<laughs> Yours truly, Bugs Claws. I'm gonna do the whole chimney bit with a ho ho ho. Yeah, I'm gonna show that Junior a thing or two. Hey, here he comes now. Me. What's up, Doc? Got your stocking all hung up for Santa Claus tonight? Come on, Uncle Bugs. There's no such thing as Santa Claus. Oh, there ain't? Well, we'll see about that. You better get to sleep now. Nighty night, Junior. Good night, Uncle Bugs. The time has come for Uncle Bugs Claus to get dressed. Now on goes the suit. Hey, <laughs> I look kind of cute. And the beard. Hey, uh, what's going on here? Oh, okay, that's better. Now, uh, I'll just wait to make sure Junior's asleep. Gee, I'm a little tired myself. <sighs> Maybe I'll just take a little nap. Whoa there, Rudolph! <laughs> this chimney looks like a tight fit. <clears throat> Made it. Either I'm getting bigger every year, or these chimneys are getting smaller. And <laughs> carrying this bicycle didn't help either. <laughs> Here, let's see. Uh, this is for Junior Bunny, and... Uh... Oh, ho, 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 ho. Looks like one of my helpers has fallen asleep on the job. Well, I'll just fill up his stocking with lots of fresh carrots and leave him a little note. Well... Gotta hurry along now. Away we go, Rudolph. On, Dasher. On, Dancer. On, Rancher. Uncle Bugs, wake up. Wake up. What's up, Doc? Didn't you hear all that noise? It woke me up. I wonder what it could have been. Wow, a new bike. Oh, Uncle Bugs, thank you, thank you. Hey, don't thank me, kid. I'm the guy who fell asleep on the job, remember? Say, just what I wanted. Carrots. And there's a note in my stocking. Dear Bugs, thank you for... For helping me spread Christmas joy. As long as there are people who believe Santa Claus will remain part of the spirit of Christmas. Keep up the good work. Your tired friend... Friend, Santa Claus. P.S. I hope Junior likes his bike. Maybe next year, he could ask for something smaller. Gee, Uncle Bugs, I don't know what to say. How about, thanks, Santa, and Merry Christmas, everybody. Do you believe in Santa Claus, do you? Do you? Do you believe in Santa Claus, do you? Do you? If you believe in chocolate bars, making wishes on twinkling stars, sharing all your Christmas gifts, and there's no maybes, buts, or ifs, you do, you do, then Santa Claus will believe in you. Do you believe in Santa Claus, do you, do you, do you believe in Santa Claus, do you? Do you? If you believe in four-leaf clover, locking pinkies, friends forever, that a girl named Cinderella lost a slipper, found a fella, you do? You do. Then Santa Claus will believe in you. You don't have to see him to believe him, and still you will know that he is there. A sure sign of every Christmas season. The love that he gives is in the air. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Do you? Do you? Do you believe in Santa Claus? Do you? Do you? If you believe that Rudolph flies, that leprechauns are little guys, that fairies come and leave you money when you lose your front tooth, sonny, you do? You do. Then Sandy Claus will believe.